Welcome, dear traders. Last week we discussed the possibility of a summer rally in the stock market, assuming that it had already reached its lowest levels. However, these assumptions are not relevant anymore given the fresh inflation report. Investors are now getting rid of risk uh, stocks. The main US stock indexes have already slipped to multi-month lows. Last week, Wall Street looked the worst performance since January. The S&P 500 once again slid into bearish territory. And inflation fears are now intensifying. Investors are convinced that soaring inflation will force the Fed to tighten monetary policy more aggressively. It means that the risks of a recession have increased as well. The two-year Treasury yield rocketed above the 10-year government bond yield for the first time since April, indicating fears of an economic shock. Even though traders are still digesting the inflation report, they should also brace for another important event. On a Wednesday, the Fed will halt its monetary policy meeting. Investors are factoring in a 75 basis point rate hike, waiting for new hints from the Fed. If the Fed takes more aggressive measures to rein in inflation, Wall Street may experience another sell-off. Watch our video review and find out more interesting details. Feel free to leave your comments down below. And let's start! Consumer prices unexpectedly surged to 8.6% in annual terms. It came as an unpleasant surprise for traders. The inflation report was published prior to the Fed's meeting. As a result, analysts rushed to revise the outlooks on the Fed's future plans for monetary policy. The monetary policy tightening cycle is likely to accelerate given the current inflation levels. If inflation expectations remain the same for the upcoming two meetings in June and July, a rate increase by 50 basis points at each meeting looks quite likely. As for September, analysts do not rule out a 75 basis point hike, although the Fed has previously strongly rejected such a scenario. Soaring inflation puts the policymakers in a difficult position. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell and Janet Yellen have already admitted that they misjudged the path of inflation. They will surely make some adjustments taking into account the latest report. The main priority now is to prevent further growth in the consumer prices. Therefore, a 75 basis point rate increase may take place. The Fed needs to act uh, promptly, as it has already lost uh, the right moment. However, aggressive tightening may lead to two unpleasant consequences, namely a recession. Some analysts reckon that uh, it's uh, inevitable. According to the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta, the second quarter's GDP slowed to 0.9% from 1.3% in annual terms in just a week. If the situation does not change for the better, GDP is likely to fall again, logging a decrease in the two quarters in a row. When the economy experiences two consecutive quarters of a negative GDP growth, it can only signal one thing – a recession. Thus, there are no positive drivers now, as the result pessimism on Wall Street persists. All three main stock indexes sharply declined last Friday. The Dow Jones retreated by 4.6%, while the S&P 500 and Nasdaq sank by 5.1% and 5.6% respectively. This is the steepest weekly drop since January 21. Last Friday alone, the Dow Jones and the S&P shed 2.7% and 2.9% respectively, and the Nasdaq slipped by 3.5%. Apart from devastating inflation figures, the Uni University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index was no less alarming. The index fell to record low of 50.2 uh, points in June, further feeling um, of looming recession. All sectors closed in the red, banks and retailers suffered the biggest losses. At the opening on June 13, shares also extended losses in the first hours. The drop exceeded 1%.
A bit later, the losses were similar to those incurred last Friday. The Dow Jones dropped by more than uh, 800 points or 2.5 percent. Apparently, U.S. stock futures continued to drift lower because of the negative market reaction to inflation data published on June 10. The yield of 10-year U.S. government bonds climbed to 3.27 percent, the highest level since 2011. A rally in the bond market is associated with the fact that investors are betting on an ever bigger rate increase. For the S&P 500, the sideways movement of the previous week also turned into a drastic decline. On June 13, it lost more than 3%, sliding into negative territory. A week ago, the S&P 500 began to slightly recover, rising to 4,100 points. To summon the upward movement, the index should have broken through 4,200 points. However, it did not happen. The bulls do not make new attempts to push the price uh, higher, as uh, they are lacking positive drivers. Monday's sell-off pushed the S&P index into a bear market. The next target level after Friday's decline was 3,815 points. On a Monday, the index dipped below it. Such a rapid downward movement indicates that bears may push the price down to 3,505 points. The bearish trend prevails. The nearest resistance level is located at 3,940 points. Then and the levels of Friday's gap starting from 3,975 and 4,017 points. These levels could limit an upward potential. There are scenarios that suggest a deeper dive of the index. For instance, Goldman Sachs expects the S&P to sink to 3,150 points. Macro stats like the inflation report may significantly affect the trajectory of the index both for the worse and for the better. In any case, the main outlook for 2022 remains approximately unchanged. The S&P is expected to return to 4,300 points amid the revenue growth of companies included in the index. The high-tech Nasdaq uh, slid on uh, June 13 at the fastest pace. Its uh, intraday drop amounted to 4%. Investors got extremely nervous because of the revised forecast for the economy and the Fed's possible next steps on a monetary policy. Perhaps on Wednesday, FMC policymakers will somewhat come traders. Before the Fed meeting, market sentiment will remain tense, which may lead to new losses. What's more, the sentiment was dampened by the epidemiological situation in China. Last week, the country eased quarantine restrictions. However, Shanghai had to reintroduce them this week to curb the virus spread. The business sentiment in China is rather unfavorable, even after the end of quarantine restrictions. Despite the opening of cities, there is still the problem of a strict zero-COVID policy that severely hurts economic activity. People are even unaware of whether they will be allowed to leave their homes. Shares of U.S. companies have reached 19 rents lows in their recent sessions. On a Monday, stocks of tech companies such as Amazon, Nvidia and Netflix were down at least by 5%. And this week, the earnings report of the IT giant Adobe is in the limelight. The company's revenue is projected to total $4.3 billion, up 13.2% in annual terms. In March, Adobe unveiled a weak quarterly outlook, suggesting that intense competition is hurting the design software segment. Uh, Adobe announced that it would significantly revise the price for its uh, Creative Cloud sub uh, subscriptions for the first time since 2017. This may have a negative impact on earnings in the second half of the fiscal year. Since the beginning of the year, its shares have fallen by 30%. Subscribe to our channel and keep your finger on the pulse. We work for you, making new video reviews every day and every week. That's all for now. See you soon.